Thank you so much, quick shot. I'm backstage with Huhi right now to talk about his general sentiment around the tournament so far. What did you think about MSI so far, the way things played out and the really difficult draw that has been given to the West? <laughs> uh -huh. um, I mean, I think it's just difficult for all of us, um, but especially after playing versus JDG, um, kind of gave me more hope mm -hmm. because uh, like as much as we respect them, I think we had a fair chance to beat them as well. Uh, like you can tell, like by like other games, G2 take out a game. Mad Lions almost won a game. C9 as well, like had some early game leads, and us too. So um, yeah, I mean it's it's just a shame that we have to all like play each other, like our origins. But yeah, hopefully whoever makes it to the next stage can. Uh, make a revenge. Yeah. Uh, at least we'll have some Western teams making it to the next round, but uh, focusing a bit more about how things played out so far for you guys. How did you prep against JDG? What is your approach and the learnings from playing a team like this? Um, I mean, I think prepping versus JDG, like especially like uh, one of the team, like one of the strongest team in the world, is definitely hard because I just feel like even in draft phase, if you give this, give them this champion and we trade another champion, it just doesn't look fair uh, when we look at their names. But I think in the at the end of the day, you just have to be confident uh, of yourself and yeah. about like trading the matchup that you want to be and just playing your own playstyle. Yeah, and it's the kind of stuff that can help you in the next round facing C9 again, an opponent that you know really well. How do you think it's going to go this time around with the experience you gain from playing mm -hmm. JDG before? Um, I think this time uh, I feel like we have the edge on it uh, just because from this play-ins and, uh, and this uh, group stage, I think we learned a lot as a team and improved a lot as a player. So versus C9, uh, compared to before, I am way more confident and uh, I'm pretty confident that we're going to beat them. Any last words on what you thought of C9 so far, maybe? Um, C9 looks pretty much the same, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't think Sven is that good and Berserker, I think, is really good. Mm -hmm. So I think in ball lane, I think Trevor has stepped up a lot. Like Stixie has uh, been playing pretty well. And I feel like we're just going to win ball lane versus right. them. Well, wishing you the best of luck in the next round. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. And Trevor, back to you. Thank you so much, Law. Hello, London. And then you went in for the Verizon Game Day interview. Welcome back to our second best of five of the day in the LCS Finals rematch between Cloud9 and the Golden. Guardians. I will be your host on the analyst desk for the second half of today. I am Quickshot, joined by Orgs and Jack. You had to bring me over for had the end Had to game. bring you over you for the You didn't want me for anything Listen, else. Just this. I'm after leaving after this. Watching that pre-show and the hours of content that you did and talking about the players, I wanted to give you one more shot. C9GG uh, finals recap. I mean, I have to come to you first, Jack. These, these players, these teams, not only have they faced each other recently, a number of the individuals, they also have a lot of history here at MSI stage. It's something that we've been part of the journey for as well. Yeah, and I do hope that they can both find almost a comfort level in playing against each other so they can take that confidence through the next round, no matter who wins, because they did just match up in the regional finals, just like the last three matchups yes, exactly. we've seen. <laughs> but I would say in this series in particular, Cloud9 came in as big favorites. Golden Guardians really surprised Cloud9 with how aggressive they could be in the early game, jumped out to a big lead game, one loss, jumped out to a big lead game, two, one, and then I think Cloud9 adapted with a lot stronger early game champions and plans to close out the series in the result that people expected, just not in the manner in which they expected. I feel like Golden Guardians have continued to surprise, though. I feel like a lot of people coming off this final thought Cloud9 clearly the stronger team, but going into this series today, it feels like it's hard to judge. Yeah. Golden Guardians have had a really strong performance in the tournament so far, some big step-ups from the players, and we've also seen them even take a game off BLG, which obviously Cloud9 weren't able to do. And of course, it's the fact they picked up that game against BLG that gives me hope for G2 when they face him tomorrow. Now, a couple of days later. What I do want to say, though, is um, one of the rare opportunities I have as being one of the oldest people on the desk is I'm flanked by another one of the golden oldies, somebody who predates even me on these shows. So, Jet, let's take a dive into memory lane, go down history, talk about who he talked about Stixo, because I think a lot of fans forget that it was CLG, it was their run to finals that actually made one of the first big, like, real dents in the international tournament. They don't get talked about as often, and I think they deserve some a lot. Yeah, seven years ago, they know what international success feels like. They went seven and three in the group stage. They won the semifinal and made it all the way to the MSI final. They've now been reunited on Golden Guardians to make it here. So they're very used to being doubted and they don't get uncomfortable when they're surpassing those doubts. They were actually in North America 
power ranked by many people yes. as the eighth best <laughs> yes. team before the split started. They made it all the way to the finals. And now I think because they're so used to playing with that underdog mantra, they don't let it affect them. And I think that actually has unlocked them to play more freely so far at MSI. I want to move us along in Orcs. Can you talk to me a little bit about Blabber as well? Because I want to turn the attention to one of the other junglers who's very hungry for international success. I think Blabber in particular uh, is going to be looking for redemption. I think a lot of people are going to remember um, a dramatic start to his international match. Something about crabs? Something scuttle yeah. or whatever. But I mean, Orgs, what do you make of Blabber? What do you think of his performance from what you see so far? I think that sticks in a lot of people's memories. And I know domestically, Blabber has been absolutely fantastic, but hasn't been yeah. able to replicate that same success internationally. I think so far in this tournament, though, in that series against BLG, he was a big driving force as to why those three games felt winnable. They obviously weren't able to translate to the end, but if there's a tournament where he's going to be able to show up and finally get that international recognition, it could be here. Yeah, and I would say he did play pretty well, even though they weren't able to win a game. Something was weird to me about the way C9 was playing here. They were playing fast when they needed to play slow, and they were playing hesitant when they needed to play fast. Yeah. It felt to me like they were nervous, and I think part of it is because they were actually the underdogs. In North America, they truly believe they are the best team. Yeah. So against Golden Guardians, I don't expect them to necessarily play. Jet, Jet, I've got a bold statement, and you'll know this from working for a long time, so please bounce this off and validate for me. Okay. Is Blabber the greatest North American jungler that has played? You're going to find some uh, people that disagree with this, but I would say yes. He doesn't have as many titles as a player like X Smithy, but he's a two-time MVP. He's now a back-to-back -back champion. He knows everything about the LCS. He's actually had quite a long run when you think about it, but the big thing lacking in his resume is the international success. He hasn't made a deep run like several other players of the past, former C9 players even, when they've made it to a world semifinal at one point. And I think in particular, when you look at the players like Blab, like who he likes, Stick say, some of these players that have history that a lot of fans of viewers are going to know, this is going to be the moment to maybe make a stance or make a stand and see whether or not you can advance a face off against yeah. the uh, LCK representatives. Now, Augs, I want to come to you and give me some predictions. I want to let you know that for our Master of Fan predictions, this is the closest fan prediction of the entire tournament. With 49.5% of the votes going to Golden Guardians, 50.5% going to Cloud9. To the 100 people that went, ooh, thank you, London. That was what I wanted. I'll also let you know, JDG BLG was the most lopsided. It was like 93-7. Yeah. Yeah. Orcs, what is your prediction? Who will win and why or how will they do it? Yeah, so I understand why this is so close, but I give the edge to Cloud9 because it looked like in the same By 1% or more? By 1% or more? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, probably a bit more okay, than that. Okay. I'd probably say it's more like 60-40. I feel like Cloud9 had some good starts in the games against BLG, but it felt like they recognized the threat of being in the top lane. They started to get nervous about the game falling out of control, and they made some really aggressive plays that were unnecessary. There were, there were unforced errors that lost them control of those games, and I feel like against uh, an opponent who they're more used to, who they've already beaten before in Golden Guardians... Can I get a quick prediction from Jat? I hear the plays are yeah, just about okay. ready for draft. Yeah, I, I do think that if Golden Guardians can continue to play aggressively in the early game and Cloud9 continues to play jittery, it would be a Golden Guardians win, but I feel like Cloud9 will find a level of comfort knowing they have beaten them before in the finals. They're not going to get run over in the early game, and I think they'll win 3-1. So there we go, two Cloud Nines. I think Golden Guardians are going to do it. I believe in who he and Sticks are. I think in particular who he's the player I'm going to watch. We're going to head over to our new TriCast. Golden Guardians taking on Cloud9. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. The rematch of the LCS Spring Finals in 2023. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Kobe and Vettius, our honorary third NA Ooh. caster of the day <laughs> welcome, here for this showdown. Thank you, my friend. Oh, it is an absolute pleasure to be here for the LCS Finals. It's a dream come true to be alongside Captain Flowers and Kobe for an LCS Finals. You joined us for the EU Finals. That was an an event. That was something. Well, it was an event. <laughs> Can you promise me an event today? I I'm hoping we see something as cool as the Cassiopeia blind tops from uh, from Broken Blade here. And honestly, top is a big story in this rematch. You know, for finals for LCS, it was a landslide for Cloud9. Everybody thought Cloud9 was going to dominate them. They did actually end up taking it. But so many. Moments of growth for Golden Guardians have come up, especially at MSI, you know, Licorice especially. This guy in the top lane, solo killing both 369 and Ben, playing with full confidence. So let's see how it changes the matchup.
All right, so starting off, we've got the LeBlanc, the Nidalee, the Scion banned out by Golden Guardians. That Scion for Fudge, LeBlanc for m &S, very important there. Kennen, Annie, and Vi all banned away by C9. That Vi ban, very important against Golden Guardians in the finals. Maokai, the first lock here for the Guardians. No Rengar. Surprised, Kobe? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Actually, but, uh, okay, I won't get into it. I don't want to spoil some things, but uh, yeah. We have more Rengar players. Uh, nice. you know, in, in the LCS, and they're they all, some of them are better than, <laughs> than, than, than what we saw. So uh, there, there are more chances of Rengar play. The Maokai though has been focused so heavily oh, yeah. as a jungler. You know, even though they nerfed the AP style Maokai, tank Maokai, uh, pretty much unnerfed, and so everybody wants that security for these team fights because the whole game now is about playing around, setting up these AD carries. Uh, Aphelios and Jinx. Guess what? We get another Aphelios and Jinx. If one is not banned. I mean, it's no surprise these days. Those two champs are the main characters of bot lane. We'll see if these guys can pilot it as effectively as we saw Ruler doing in the previous series. It's certainly a high bar to try to measure up to. Cassante locked in on the side of C9. They love flexing this pick back and forth between the solo lanes. Gives a lot of flexibility to that draft. And we'll see what Golden Guardians wants to close out this top half with. Jinx generally likes to have one of those supportive enchanter style champions next to her in the bottom lane. Is that what they want to go for here? Who he has also been absolutely fantastic on the engagers, the playmakers. Instead, they'll lock in the Jace here for Golden Guardians. So the flexibility means that Golden Guardians have a lot of safety here by being able to put the Jace both mid and top. Cloud9, they'll have this window where they can respond with a support for themselves. They could have chosen to go for the Thrash. Looks like right now they're thinking about the Lulu. But either way, because they can then remove some of the count options that can come through from the side of Golden Guardians. I think this makes a lot of sense, um, especially when you don't know quite yet where this chase is going to go. Yeah, and the Lulu has been the most highly prized for setting up those carries for scaling for later. I do want to point out that Golden Guardians in the finals of LCS they banned Jace every single game versus Cloud9. So they have a very high priority on denying this from Cloud9. So the Jace pickup, not only is it possible flex, but it is also a big denial in their eyes, especially from Cloud9. Yeah, I think one of the big evolutions we've seen at this MSI is the value of Cassante. I know especially in the West, his priority dropped dramatically after he yeah. did receive a number of nerfs, but the LCK teams have demonstrated to the world how powerful this pick is in both mid and top, as Cloud9 looking to remove some of those extra supports. Yeah, we've got the Blitzcrank taken off the table, the extra playmaking, the extra just scariness of that champion that very few others can replicate in the same way. Syndra banned out by Golden Guardians. You're looking at MS in the mid lane there with that ban. Remember that for a while, he was doing really well on Assassin Champions specifically. Syndra was the first control mage he would pull out after that Assassin streak and show that he's not just an Assassin player, he can play the control mages as well. Thresh banned out by Cloud9, just going with both of those hook-based champions off the table versus Hui. Now, Blaba has a lot of freedom here. Typically, you'd see that jungle pool continue to be decreased, right? Invest more bands, limit the options of the enemy jungle, because it feels like the when Vi and Maokai, uh, along with Nidalee, are taken off the table, you then start looking at the Kha'Zix, potentially. But we know Blabber is a very versatile jungler that has a lot of options. I wonder if he's going to go meta here with something like the Sejuani, or if he's feeling a little creative today. And I think there's a very, very high likelihood for Cloud9 to put the Cassante mid. Um, so they're not too worried about MS champion pool here for Golden Guardians. They don't drop any extra bands into it. And there we go. We do get the extra melee, the extra front line here with the Sejuani. Already having Cassante to rely on in a solo lane for stacking up that passive for the stun. Easy stuff. We'll see what they want to finish this draft out with, but Golden Guardians have to pick first still. The Fiora could get thrown wow. down. We know that this is a good answer into Cassante generally, so they're not afraid to lock it in, knowing that they can just try to move it against that. Yeah, I love it. This has been the biggest change for Golden Guardians from the regular season. This confidence into Licorice, and they throw him down with the Fiora here. Nautilus being picked up. They didn't. You can't get all of the hook champions off the board with only two bands, and they do pick that one up for who he who he has been instrumental in Golden Guardians engages in all of their games. Silas, I mean, it does make sense for MNS, but I guess into the Maokai, it also makes even more sense. You then have even more engaged tools. Whatever you throw into the Fiora is not really going to be a fun matchup, but. The evolution of Licorice as a player. Obviously, Golden Guardians have always had that faith in him. But here at MSI, he has really stepped up as a player, really been the shining star of Golden Guardians. And to get to see him rematch against Fudge, kind of the top dog of North America. Yeah. We'll see how much uh, this 
growth has been able to impact his domestic competition. So gentlemen, we see all 10 champions now. Who are you going to give the edge in this one to just going out of the draft before we hit the rip? I actually really like the late Silas pick. He's not picking for a lane at all here. He's picking to steal away the Nautilus and the Maokai Ultimates. Big engaged counter here. So it is going to be a big, beefy front line. Three members of melee there for Cloud9 diving in to create space for Berserker. And we've seen what Korea Nefelios can do so far at this tournament. <laughs> yes, we have. Berserker counts too. Uh, I think the Golden Guardians comp is just harder to execute, right? By running Jace Fior, you have two side laners that you have to ideally get resources into, make sure that they have a healthy laning phase, and then you can actually play the map around them. You don't have the same front-to-back strength that someone like the C9 composition does have. So as we get later into the game, I think the C9's comp is going to be easier to execute. So the burden of responsibility falls on Golden Guardians to show us that early game dominance. But Licorice has been solo killing all the top laners that he's that faced he has. so far. And he's on the Fiora. I love the faith that you know Golden Guardians have, have put in this player, and we'll see if he can do it again. And specifically, Licorice against Cloud9. Remember that Licorice's heights of his career before this recent just streak of greatness with Golden Guardians were on Cloud9. For a while after that, it just felt like he wasn't able to find that same luster for a long time. He's been chasing those shadows ever since, trying to regain that same level. And now here he is. He got a shot at taking the title from Cloud9 fell short with Golden Guardians there. Now they get another chance right here, right now, to potentially knock his old team out of MSI and prove that he is better here and now. What a story that would be for him and for Golden Guardians to be able to do that. Yep. And on the other side is Cloud9 looking to maintain that international representation for North America, the organization that always finds a way to make it through and the winner of this best of five will go up against Gen G. Let's rock and roll. We're on to the rip for game number one in the North American showdown between number one Cloud9 and number two Golden Guardians. Loser goes home. Winner goes on to play Gen G. Definitely a big task in front of them, but got to focus game by game. I think one of the biggest things uh, that hurt Cloud9 in their first series here at MSI was a lot of lack of coordination, getting a bit over anxious in a lot of the skirmishes as well as the team fights. Meanwhile, Golden Guardians have seemed pretty smooth even when they are losing. They're always looking for those objective setups and ways back into the game. So speaking of setups, one thing I do want to point out, River is going for the Red Smite first strike build here yeah, on the Maokai. <laughs> Setting up those saplings is going to mean a lot of hurt for whoever face checks into the brushes if Golden Guardians have control and make it to objectives first. Yeah, the, the AP build for Maokai definitely was nerfed, but he is solo AP on this team. With so much other AD sources here for Golden Guardians, River knows he's going to have an opportunity here to definitely do a lot of softening up of enemy champions with saplings in the brush with that extra damage. So far in this early game, looks like nothing too crazy is going to happen. There was an early ward invested into that tribush from C9. If Golden Guardians had information on that, they could look to try and punish it in the early game as River looks to be doing a full clear bot side, could look for an early gank which perhaps C9 have anticipated already. A bit of trading, though, in the 2v2. Yep, who he just immediately engaging on Sven there. Worth pointing out here in this bottom lane as well. Difference in summoner spells on the AD carries. Berserker with the Ghost, Stixay with the Cleanse. Very important considering there is some powerful CC on the side of Golden Guardians that would be able to lock Berserker down. He will not have that extra escape mechanism, but once more, it's Sven getting hit with the dredge line as Cloud9 loses out on some health in these early trades. So that fight for level two. Mid lane has already secured it, but in the bot lane as well. It will be Golden Guardians that secure it. Hook connects. Oh, forcing the flash out of the Lulu, who he is dialing these in time and time again, playing the emote game at the same time, having a little fun with it. Yeah, Golden Guardians bottom lane once again, getting some early advantages out of the C9 bottom lane here. Sven is the target. Blabber over the back of this barren wall, though, slipping around to try and contain Licorice. He'll be spotted on vision that hero. Blabber being pinged out gives information to River and the bot lane. This means that Stixay and Huhi can continue their aggression. The mid lane push that Gory has means that he can collapse first. But uh, Blabber senses that something is amiss and will choose to disengage. And that sense comes from watching mid lane there. Gory starts hovering up towards top side with his lane push. As a jungler, you see that him coming towards you. You got to get out of there. Maokai could be in the brush. So good adaptation there from Blabber not to follow through, not to get surprised by the Maokai in the brush. 
Blabber learning from the mistakes of times long gone, not getting baited into problems in the river, but down here in bottom side, it's Huhi going in. They look for some damage, they find a little on Berserker, but it's not enough. Huhi below 200 HP now. Berserker and Sven looking to keep this chase alive, but the summoner spells have already all been spent. Stick stays still with his flash. Oh. The only thing left, and he gets away for now. But MS is coming around from above. He goes in. He looks for them both. First blood over onto Stick Say. And Huhi both. A double kill. And it's MS getting paid. Oh, MS drops minions in mid lane, but it does not matter. He gets the double kill on Vod. River knows. Bottom side has already been overloaded, so he's looking at Fudge. Fudge trying to get away here. River goes forward with Twisted Advance. Nice job by Fudge, just pushing him back into the turret. Golden Guardians will not get anything in return except for the flash of the Cassante, and it's Cloud9 feeling good with a 1,000 gold lead. I was so impressed with how Golden Guardians were playing these first few levels. They were getting so many advantages in the bot lane 2v2, and then they overstep, something that we have seen from them this tournament. They overcommit to that play, and the execution falls short, and that was all Cloud9 needed to punish and find themselves two kills. Yeah, one thing they misstepped on there, slightly misplaced the Flame Chompers. Stixay had the Flame Chompers behind where who he had rooted Berserker, so Berserker did not get stopped with those. And he had Purple Gun. Yep. So the Purple Gun slow autos there, keeping them a little bit in range, allowing Sven for the chase down on Lulu, Glitter Lances to really soften them. And yeah, we'll get another look here. So who he gets him, he roots him in, but the Flame Chompers are behind Berserker. So he gets to walk forward with Purple Gun, gets the roots, get a bunch of extra damage, uh, as well, and then Sven going to force the flash out of Stixay. So once MS gets here, it's served up on a platter. Yep. Oh my goodness, he's salivating in that brush, seeing these low health members walk away from their tower. Flashes to make sure he can get both kills. Nautilus first, even with the hook, and then boom, hit him with the Q. Well, nicely placed from MS. 700 gold into his pocket, and the bot lane. Faltering in the early game for Golden Guardians means that MS puts himself in a great position, which MS did have a challenging best of five to start off the bracket stage to set him up for success in the early game, especially on a champion that can be bullied by the Jace. Mm -hmm. Definitely a great start for C9. Yeah, and especially with the, the ring start there. Four stacks on the Dark Seal is absolutely massive for a Silas as Blabber is just chasing River down. Yeah, River forced to flash away there in the 1v1 of the river. Blabber went in knowing he had the advantage, and the fact that MS was in battle there in the mid lane meant that there was no help coming in for River from his own mid laner in Gori. Nicely done there, getting a free flash from the enemy jungle. Yeah, having MS have such a massive lead in mid lane here with the extra two kills is really going to change the, the face of the game here and how Golden Guardians can actually play around it. This Maokai is very squishy. He went over, he's going with the, the Red Smite plus the First Strike build here. So uh, definitely going to have to worry quite a lot about those rotations. Cloud9 will use that mid lane and bottom lane pressure to have an uncontested first pickup of the Hex Drake. What I'll say is this mid lane matchup, while Gori is getting a lot of great trades onto MS, MS is just finding better windows to move. Uh, even in that little skirmish in the river, the main reason why River had to flash was because MS forced his way into that river so that he could actually fight the two versus two. And seeing that Gori couldn't assist meant that there was no way that they could turn that around, especially with the health disadvantage that the river found himself. So, huge props to MS really getting involved in the map. But now that C9 kind of have firm control over this bot lane two versus two, Golden Guardians, in terms of getting early leads, need to start funneling resources into the top side of the map. And, and honestly, I would say for Cloud9, keep focusing on bottom side. Oh, yeah. Have Blabber clear from top down towards bottom side of the map and keep that pressure up. That pressure has led to a 900 gold lead. Not much more than what it was earlier already, so things haven't gone any worse than they were earlier for the Golden Guardians, and that's kind of where they need to be. Make sure you don't bleed out from some of these early mistakes. Get yourselves to the point where you can do some of that team fighting that we've seen them excel at, that we've seen them shine with, that got them to the point where they're here competing at MSI in the first place. You mentioned it earlier, Vettius, the draft is going to demand a lot of team cohesion later on in this game from Golden Guardians, and they gotta be in a spot where they're able to play that. All right, Blabber's got his level six. So Sejuani turns Silas into a very, very, very effective skirmisher here with Sejuani ult plus the, the quick way that you can stack up uh, the passive stun as well, and a stolen Nautilus ultimate as well. There's 
massive amounts of crowd control there in that duo, but they're actually going to rotate it towards bottom like we talked about for Cloud9, whereas Golden Guardians will just pick up the Rift Herald in exchange for a pretty big sacrifice here. Let's see if Stixa has the confidence to even get in there. He's trying to at least hover for experience range. Right, but it's so difficult to approach much further, especially with Blabber coming down here over the wall, just farming up the Krugs. River on the other end of the map will finally secure that Rift Herald, heads back to base with it. Golden Guardian's gonna walk up, see the enemy jungler there, stealing away those Krugs. They go in after him, but Blabber should just be able to disengage over the wall if he wants to. He's wasting a little bit more of their time, decides to use the Arctic Assault, retreats back over the way he came. Zven and Berserker not close enough I mean, to turn coming. that into a 3v2 immediately, but MNS is pathing down towards this tier 1 turret yet again. Berserker and Zven lasting a little bit longer, just not enough damage to get that third place. Still roll, Cloud9 punishing the big mistake that we saw from Golden Guardians in the early laning phase. The fact that level 1, 2, 3, who he was consistent landing hooks, it gave them priority and ability to actually gain control in this bot lane 2 versus 2. The second that they lost those summoner spells, this bot lane became a very easy way for C9 to gain advantages in early game. This is what we've been seeing every single moment of MNS's time. Clear a wave, move into bot river. Clear a wave, move into bot river. Clear a wave. And it doesn't even matter whether he's actually looking for a roam or not. It's just by moving into the fog of war, he creates this threat that Golden Guardians always has to respect. And, and from the Golden Guardian side, I actually think they got away with a steal getting that Rift Trail for themselves. Because Cloud9 even as much threat. Oh, MNS! He's just immediately shut down. What in the hell was he doing? Gory just walks in, takes him out of the 1v1. It will be brought back there by Blabber. But a breakdown in communication on Cloud9 lines makes it a one for one. But we ain't done yet. Fudge now could be in some trouble as who he goes in and drops the ulti down onto Sven. Here comes the Maokai ult from behind. It's going to be blocked up by Blabber, and he's the one soaking the damage now. Sejuani's tanky, but it's him for dinner, and Stick says eating good. Golden Guardians end up coming out on top in the play. This is huge for Golden Guardians. That was a shutdown already with the early two kills onto MNS. He, he drops a bunch of the stacks off of his Dark Seal, and they get the extra kill after their rotation from bottom lane coming up here. Even though Cloud9 had a massive early game, Golden Guardians fighting right back. It feels like coordination, exactly as you guys were saying, was just off there for Cloud9. The idea, I guess, was MNS, oh, Blabber's here, we can just fight this two versus two, but Blabber either was too far away, we'll get to look when we get the replay up, but they were not in sync. It just made it very easy for Gory to get that isolated 1v1. With the early damage, it was more than enough. And let's have a look here. So the back is coming through, a bit of a skirmish. So I think initially Blabber was like, oh, you actually want to fight this? And it just felt like that the communication there was clearly off yeah. between the mid-jungle. I mean, also MNS had flash, so uh, doesn't doesn't try and like flash away from the Jace. In the end, they do get the one for one, but Golden Guardians get an extra kill here with the rotation of bottom lane up. You have a Nautilus ult into a Maokai ult. So River comes to sacrifice or Blaber comes to sacrifice himself for his support here, but it's still going to be a kill nonetheless over to Stixay, and that's right onto the Jinx. Whenever you have to run away in a single direction from that Maokai ult, remember those buffs to the ult that made it so much faster that brought him back into the meta makes it so difficult for everybody to get away. They thought Blabber would have the best chance of sticking around and surviving it, but even he is not tanky enough just yet. It is still a Cloud9 gold advantage. They also still have the one Drake compared to none of Golden Guardians so far. That second Drake of the game is available now. Blabber goes in, Gory with a nice sidestep to get away from that Glacial Prison, but he won't get away from the kill and it's Blabber getting the money. And there you see the difference of MNS did save his flash and went down in the early skirmish, whereas Gory did use it to try and get away from Blabber in the in the counter. And so in the end, it does come full circle and they get him back and get the extra one. Yeah, coordination, definitely much more on point there with the C9 mid jungle. They still hold on to the gold lead for now, but you can feel like that the game is its momentum has suddenly shifted. C9 had a very clear control over the early game with how they were playing through their bot side of the map, funneling plates onto Berserker, and by sacrificing the Herald, they were still getting gold where they needed it to. But after that skirmish, the fact that Stixa secured himself a kill, the fact that he's getting another plate in top side, Golden Guardians are picking up a lot of gold onto their carry, and Stixa even has more gold than Berserker now, even after all of the early shenanigans. Second Drake of the game over to Cloud9, and we will get ourselves a Mountain Rift, Mountain Soul possibility they can keep stacking towards. 
Cloud9 will be happy to see that one come up. Still with that 1,000 gold lead. Just about one minute left until the plates fall, so not a lot of time to pick up any extra economic advantages from those. Gory's going to try to shove this wave up. MS, slight health advantage, but not a lot of mana to work with. Yeah, I think Cloud9 are still very confident here. They continue to have a very quick dragon stack. They still have their gold lead for themselves. And critically, they have a pretty strong five-on-five five setup. If they just get Berserker with the rest of the team behind the three frontliners there, they should have a nice advantage. Licorice on the Fiora did just get to Divine Sunderer, though. So now you at least get to start having some fun as the Fiora and, and start really scaling. Mythic items up and running on both those top laners. 80 carries and mids as well with them complete. Obviously supports not quite at that point. Demonic Embrace finished for Rivers Maokai. So the extra poke, the extra control over the brushes that he's able to establish those in could mean a lot as we continue going forward in the game. 14 minutes just now hitting that clock means we're firmly out of the early game, ready to go. I'm expecting larger fights now, expecting to see more rotations coming around. Licorice and Fudge in the bottom half of the map while everyone else playing topside. Gory trying to keep this tier one turret alive in mid lane. Yeah, interesting lane allocations too from Golden Guardians where they keep Stixe on the Jinx up on topside. Took up those minions and had Gory still standing in mid with the, the jungle support roam coming through to get their vision. Now, Berserker holding on to this mid push means that they will have a way into the river. But Golden Guardians have forced their way in, cleared out this vision, started the Herald off. Blabber face checking the pixel brush. Said Juani's not going to take a lot of damage just thanks to the passive. Very easy to ignore a lot of that up front first. But Cloud9 still have not made their way into the river. Golden Guardians with control over the pit, control over the Herald, taking that one out. 1v1 here in the bottom lane. Fudge goes in. Licorice in a lot of trouble. He issues the grand challenge. But how does it go from here? Fudge still moving forward, thinking about fighting this longer. Licorice with another lunge away. Disengages the fight. Doesn't want anything more to do with the all-out Cassante. So Golden Guardians walk away with the Herald as Fudge found a pretty good opportunity in bot lane, but after committing the flash, Licker said, you know what, the health disparity is too big, I don't want to take that gamble, I'm just going to disengage for now. A lot of farm will be lost, but in the grand scheme of things, Licorice continues to scale up in the sideline. Yeah, and Golden Guardians get their turret on the top side for Stix A. He dropped a few minions because MNS pushed it into the tower while they went for the Rift Herald, but they exchanged that top tower for their mid tower here. And that's the difference in AD carry lane allocation. Blabber hovering behind Berserker to ensure that he can collect. Cloud9 getting one back in mid, making that turret count even once more at one to one. Gold is only 100 apart, just 16 minutes into the game. Both teams have had a couple of mistakes. Both teams have had a couple of good plays here as well. So Cloud9 and Golden Guardians seemingly very evenly matched here in this first game. What do you guys want to see happen next, particularly from the viewpoint of the Golden Guardians, since they have the more complex composition for win conditions as the game goes forward? Yeah, so this is the tricky part now for Golden Guardians because they have to navigate the upcoming drag in a minute and a half, right? With C9 getting that early investment, they're more than happy to have Golden Guardians come and fight them. Uh, the question is, how do you then incorporate this Fiora into these fights? Do you look for a flank, maybe threaten the back line? Do you instead try and keep Fudge isolated so that you have a 4v4 and Fudge can't really get into the fights? Like, leveraging this uh, Fiora pick is going to be the hardest part of Golden Guardians navigating these mid-game fights. Yeah, I think they could just keep him splitting over there. Maokai ult, though. MNS goes in after Gory, but River's coming down to defend him as well. Gory can disengage back underneath the tier one turret. Both mid laners gonna walk away sub half HP. Cloud9 sending multiple men to reinforce this situation while it's still just Gory and River defending now in a 2v4. Blabber comes over the wall, Glacial Prison again, sidestepped by Gory, doing a good job recognizing these ultis. Does still have to flash away to avoid the follow up from the Moonlight Vigil as well as Blabber's W. And that means the Golden Guardians get their guy out, but they are going to lose the tier one in the bottom lane. Stixe and Huhi, not enough damage to get one back in mid. Yeah, I think Golden Guardians commit to your split push, keep that Fiora up in the side lane. There's no teleport, but they're going to get attacked in mid. Stixe getting caught out by the stolen Nautilus ultimate as he has to flash away and Blabber stays on top of him and Berserker cashes in. Huhi's going to be caught out in the middle of three and he makes it a double back over to Berserker. Cloud Nine get exactly what they came for. The collapse from Cloud Nine is clean. Ebon S and Blabber working together once again to find the shutdown onto Stixe and gain control over mid. Looks like they're not going to convert this into the dragon. They want to get that reset off, but knowing them, they'll come back out onto the map, catch that side wave, and immediately start that objective. Yep, they've got time to reset. 
C9, they push out bottom side, they push Gory all the way to the second tower, get his flash then. MNS starts it out as the rest of the C9 team roam up through the river. Beautiful start here from MNS onto Stixe. By the time Blabber gets there, he has nothing left. And so Berserkers right in on top of him. They wipe Golden Guardians out of that mid lane. It's just a, a, an overstep from the bot lane of Golden Guardians in mid. They try to go for a skirmish. The Koresh oh. is dead. There, yeah, Cloud9 are roaming around the map, killing every Golden Guardian member they see while they get the objectives. It's Golden Guardians not really respecting the early pushes Cloud9 are get. First of all, Cloud9, get priority on bottom side, rotate mid. Yeah. Then, rotate up to the top side too, collect the split pusher as well. Now, not only are they on soul point, but they're gonna get another pick. Gory being caught out by Blabber and Berserker. Berserker with the crescendo, having plenty of damage here with Blabber leading the way. He's 3-0-1 on this Aphelios now, and C9 is loving this game state. They're on soul point 19 minutes in. And this is very reminiscent of the finals where we saw Golden Guardians, after they lose a fight, they then start to misalign where they should be on the map, and Cloud9 are just so quick to catch you out of position, pick after pick after pick. They're snowballing this game out of control. And Golden Guardians, as a team, they win fast or they lose fast. This is not a team that digs in and holds on if they fall behind. They play really fast, they play really risky, and so when they start to slide, they slide hard. Yeah, this is so much more what it looks like regionally. I know on the international stage, so many people are starting to get hope for Golden Guardians with how well they've been playing, how much heart they've been playing with. But regionally, Cloud9 really had a headlock on the entire region there. And they're showing it again here. This is why people were also surprised at some of the errors Cloud9 were making in their first series of MSI. But they certainly look like they feel so much more comfortable in this matchup here versus Golden Guardians, who they know. And right now, they know they are in control of this game. Baron has spawned, and just wow. eight seconds thereafter, Cloud9 starting it up. They dare Golden Guardians to come answer them. This is the power of that comp, the ability to make your opponents come to you because you're the better team fighters, because you're ahead. Baron's at half HP. MNS has stolen away the Maokai ultimate. River using the original nature's grasp. Fires that one off, doesn't get a whole lot of value. MNS using the stolen one, and that one's gonna take down the enemy jungler. River's in the middle of four, his body hits the floor. Double kill back of a Berserker as Cloud9 ain't done yet. MNS stays on the front line, and now the rest of the team falls back to finish what they started. They never even dropped the Baron aggro. It's already down to 2,000. River's dead in the dirt, and Cloud9 has the Baron. Now that is a clean Baron. <laughs> they avoid the Golden Guardians engage with the Maokai ult, steal it, use it against them to annihilate the possibility of a steal. River goes down first. Cloud9 completely pushed them off. And they are just dominating game number one. Here's another look at it. Flowers, you highlighted MNS in the fight, and look at how impactful this Mauk ultimate is. From this angle, completely splits up Golden Guardians. River is left isolated. The Fiora really can't get involved in the fight. The Jinx locked off on the side as MNS throws out the stopwatch to buy time. The durability provided with the Lulu as well. C9 fighting on two fronts while also aggroing the Barrow. Very. The, arrow, the Baron very cleanly executed from C9. And guess what? Berserker's got five kills now. Th this Aphelios is super fed. He's getting towers with the Baron buff as well. Now it's just a landslide of the last couple minutes. We'll see how far they can build this lead with the Baron now. They've still got it for two more minutes. Golden Guardians recognizing they are in full panic mode now. And it's Licorice who's got a panic first. He's dead before I can even finish the sentence. And it's Fudge issuing the death warrant as Gory has to retreat back. But there's going to be no such salvation for River as Berserker is dominating. Stick save falls next. Who he goes with them. And the Golden Guardians burn to dust. Cloud9 is looking to make game one in swiftly. It's an absolute stomp in the top lane. Zero hesitation from Cloud9. They demonstrate their domestic dominance once more and look to end this game sub 25 minutes. Five men marching onto the Nexus turrets and only a chase to stop them. Who he and Licorice are going to be back in about five seconds, but C9 is not stopping yet. They've still got the wave, they still got plenty of resources. Gory tries to fire off a shock blast but he doesn't get enough value. Golden Guardian's coming back to life, but the Nexus is the only health bar that matters, and it just went pop. C9 
89 takes game one. It's back to business for Cloud9. An absolute stomp from Cloud9. We saw some promising moments from Golden Guardians. But we Ooh. also talked about how with this composition, it's just a lot harder to execute. And with the deficit that they found themselves in, especially around that Baron, that was just a perfect example of how easily C9 could force these fights and just tear apart Golden Guardians. And I think you said it really well at the start of the game, Vettius. MNS was finding better moments to move. He was finding better roams. He affected bot lane very, very early. Started that Cloud9 war machine chugging along. And Golden Guardians try as they might, even though there were a couple of blips there that looked like it might have been a chance. C9 was able to work together better and keep it snowballing forward. Yeah, now we got to look at Golden Guardians for bouncing back here. They cannot let this slide back into old habits of LCS playstyle here. They've shown so many more things here on the international stage. And they're getting right back into review, right back to work for them as well. I mean, a lot of my criticism goes towards Stick A. The execution on the bot lane two versus two, the overstep in the mid lane where they ended up getting caught out and losing a lot of control. He needs to be a lot more considerate of his positioning because C9, that like Blabber and MS were just locked in in this game one. The, the moment they saw that misposition, they forced the fight. And you can see how MS is feeling a lot more confident coming into best, today's best of five. And C9, they finished so quickly after getting that Baron as well. The Baron was started not 10 seconds after it spawned. The game was ended with Baron still there. Quick and easy for C9 in game number one. And to explain how it all went down, let's toss it back to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Flowers, and welcome to the Atlas Desk. I cannot wait to get to the last segment of this one. Before we do, though, North America's number one seed gets the job done in commanding fashion in game number one. To start off this post-match, Jats and Orcs, they said, let's, yeah. let's do something a bit different. Let's have yeah. something a little bit fun. Um, let's make sure we're all stocked up on the supplies that we need. So we need to go shopping. And that means yeah. we need to visit Silas and go visit m &S. Well, for people that don't know, I'm American. m s is a player for Cloud9. m s is also a store here. It's everywhere. I Jack mean, you love m &S. It's your favorite shop, isn't it, Orcs? I uh, wouldn't go that far, you know. <laughs> it's a decent shop. You know, Panty Pigs are uh, pretty good. You can get from there. You Jack know? noticed that it was here, and interestingly enough, they lost all of their games so far. <laughs> but except for this one, and it's because Silas was picked for MS and he was able to go shopping. So you understand what we're doing here. What was he shopping for? Because I don't I don't understand. Well, that's the Jack. question. So Explain Silas to me. This ultimate on Silas can turn into any number of ultimates. Uh, as if you're going to the store, and I think what we wanted to talk about was like which ultimate <laughs> is what. Yes. Okay, so, so like, what is bread and milk? So bread and milk, you know, pretty standard. You want to pick up as much as possible. I'd say that's like the Maokai ultimate, right? Especially when you have so the So you only go to the store when you need milk. I can't write, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we're letting you do this. Your handwriting's awful. <laughs> this All right, keep okay. it going. So what's bread? So I guess the Nola Soul, right? That's another good one, yeah. right? The the knock up high AP ratio. Pretty pretty solid one. You'll go, go to the store. Getting the writing task you go to. is bad. <laughs> Yeah, but I ask Trevor what he gets when he goes to the store. It's like, oh, Dr. Pepper. So yes. you're the guy who sees like <laughs> Jinx and is like, I need silence. Yes, that's what I need. That's yeah. exactly what I need. Soda. <laughs> Soda. There we go. Yes, that's it. <laughs> All right, we're, we're done with this. Anyway, he, he had good ultimates for the store. And you know what? He used those ultimates, okay. or at least he could have, because he was really fed. I mean, Orgs, let's move on to the first replay here. It was uh, Eminence roaming to the bottom lane. It's the only real game-defining moment, because frankly, once Cloud9 got rolling, they just steamrolled it. Yeah, I mean, he has fantastic ults, as we just talked about, but I feel like once they found those early two kills, and the play was kind of instigated by Golden Guardians, right? They went for the aggressive 2v2 in the bot lane. Yeah. They flashed in, trying to make the play happen. And it backfired massively because they were able to get that mid prior. So we'd see the replay, and this is super aggro, right? The flash yeah. in to try and get on the Aphelios. The traps don't quite land, but it's a follow-up that's big for Cloud9. Yeah, I think once the auto didn't land, who he needed to back away, C9 had the ability to turn this, and they just got them low enough. And interestingly enough, MNS didn't move to top river previously, which gave him the window to make this move. And he just executes this basically perfectly. Not only does he get the flash, but he's also able to get the very easy double kill with the E and the Q onto the Jinx right there. So he got very fed off of this, uh, and C9 was able to play very smartly good League of Legends throughout the rest of it. And you take a look at this post-game breakdown powered by AWS. I mean, pretty even up until 15-ish minutes. Ultimately, Cloud9 were in control for the most part. Chat, yeah. summarize the game well, before we now talk about how much we enjoyed this. Okay, so no one was that happy with the bracket draw because it meant we were getting four sequels. 
And sequels are not always great. Sequels can be hit or miss, which got us thinking, now that this is the fourth sequel we've been seeing, how does it compare to other great and bad sequels? From okay, 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 hold on, hold on now. Orgs, what is the best sequel of all time? Shrek 2. Shrek 2, okay, so we have a card here that says Shrek 2. What is the worst sequel of all time? Well, one of the worst, Speed 2 Cruise Control. Okay, so Wait, if, you, if, if you take the original yeah. okay. speeds on the bus, right, and this one, the run it, but it just doesn't work. So what you're looking at now is on a scale of Shrek 2 being the best sequel ever to Speed 2 being the worst sequel ever, I challenge both of you two to determine where do these two, uh, these four series yeah. rank. So G2 versus Mad was, I'd say, like around here. Yeah, it was a stone. It's, de it's like definitely it's, lower it's down. It's really fun to see Europe get I mean, 3 0 but London, it's also not fun to see does, them 3 0 Does London agree with us in terms of sequel ranking? G2 versus Mad was worse here than locally. Do we have a cheer at all? No? Okay, so I think they're going to be agreeing, right? Okay, we'll see. They might not understand the game. Yeah, what okay. we saw wasn't exciting. Oh, right, okay. So what was exciting <laughs> The then? best so one, I think T1 versus Gen. T1 Gen G. T1 Gen yeah. G is... Way you know, better. Yeah. Why was it better? I mean, it went to five games, okay. right? That's that, what I want. Thank that you, that Copper Box. That's slapped, yeah. okay? Um, JDG, BLG, there was some good moments. I mean, moments. Ruler was pretty good. I put that right in the middle. Right in the middle, dead yeah. middle. You know, it was still 3-0, and then... I mean, we have Cloud9 Gold Garden. Yeah, we haven't ranked yet. this one yet. What I don't want is I don't want this to be speed three. Okay. Like I definitely. And How do we avoid that? We avoid that by Golden Guardians getting more games. Actually, playing a little calmer. Okay, so if we like, like that bottom lane play, and then, and then we, we can there? move up towards Trek. Orcs, yeah. what this, do we have to do? This is the whole team. This is the whole What do we have to do for Cloud9 Golden Guardians to like jump T1 Gen G and be like Shrek 2 tier? Uh, well, the, the one thing I'll say about uh, T1 Gen G was game five was a bit one sided. So okay. if we get five good games, that's where you can see it happen. Okay, so Copper Box, I need your attention because I want to do one more crowd interaction here before we turn to the next game. Who thinks that Cloud9 GG is going to be closer to speed two? Okay, right? No, I don't think it was a... Now, now, who wants Cloud9 GG to be better than Shrek 2. Yes, why not? That is what Obviously. I wanted. Okay, so for the next game, Golden Guardians have chosen the red side. How do they get themselves closer to Shrek in order <laughs> to turn the series around, Orcs? <laughs> Give me some ideas. Yeah, I think, honestly, look at the draft. I think the, the fact that they had that super strong mid jungle 2v2 with the Silas, with the Sejuani, the fact they had the Aphelios Lulu as well, it felt like the composition for Cloud9, all fit together really well. So I think maybe going on the red okay. side means they can get at some better matchups, and hopefully that'll help them out. I think they pick red so they can do flex picks. So early Cassante, if they really want to get greedy, they get a Tristan as well because they can flex that two places. And that's how we get to Shrek. That's how we get to Shrek after an absolute stomp. Cloud9, full Cloud9 in game one. Let's see if Golden Guardians can get those flex picks and use that red side to their advantage. Lander will be right back with game number two. Yes. Okay, that works. <laughs> But MS is coming around from above. He goes in. He looks for a bow. First blood over on the stick, say. And who he bowed? A double kill. And it's MS getting paid. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 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 let I'm having GG for confidence. Hit Nexus, man. Hit Nexus. Hit up. C9 takes game one. It's back to business for Cloud9. Get in. A team against a king. DRX through game five. Seeing against believing. A moment against a moment for the ages. Countless battles, one arena, the realm. The only thing capable of powering the game, the stage, the broadcast, and the worldwide spectacle we know and love, AKA the Cisco Network.